so beautiful to me. Grey, hi and welcome. All right. So, in my last episode, I was talking about being sneaky and crafty and catching some wolves and coyotes. Oh, there'd be a nice lane right there. I want to see where they're running, though. Like, they're walking all over the place, but they're not really going anywhere. That's like, maybe they got drunk or something. But you can see, that's a deer track there. So, if, wherever the deer tracks are, that's where the wolf and coyote tracks are going to be. But it's like, when it's open like this, they're just running around. Kind of just hanging out, so to speak. I need to make laneways for them. Now, as the snow gets deeper, which I think this is going to be one of those crazy winters where it's like six foot snow. I remember usually what I do is uh, throughout the winter, I'll, I'll make a, a scorch mark on or, a, you know, like a like just a little chip out of the tree or whatever, a little uh, little scratch mark on the tree just to see how high the snow actually gets. And there was one season, it was like six and a half feet back here. So basically the height of that tree, I was up on the top of that. And it was packed enough that I couldn't, like I couldn't go any, like I couldn't, I was up to my waist in the new stuff, but you, it kind of, at some, one point it kind of holds you. Oh, there's a nice little trail right there. You can see right through, it's like a perfect, perfect, perfect hole. Would they use that? Let's see if they would use that. You know, see, uh, other things that happen too when it snows is it changes your landscape and it changes roots and it does all kinds of weird things, right? That you don't see in the spring or even late fall or whatever. So what do we got here? See them's coyote tracks or no, those deer tracks. They're the uh, deer variety coyote. Yeah. Uh, the shooting bench, got to get the shooting bench uh, cleared off here. Uh, might have to do some sighting in because my poor rifle uh, sat, I haven't fired a shot in about two and a half years. And when I pulled my rifle out of the uh, gun locker, uh, my scope was loose. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. Let's see this. I don't know what that is. I'll step on it anyway. Uh, so, get this cleared off. In the next couple of days, I'm gonna to have to sight in for about a hundred yards. Just a couple of test shots, just so I have my varmint right. Uh, I'm gonna use 308 110 grain. Hopefully, it doesn't bazooka the poor buggers if I get one. Uh, but I'm gonna be making a lot of noise be between now and then, anyway. So it's probably gonna be probably closer to March before I uh, even come close to. Um, uh, it'll be probably full of snow the next time I come by, but yeah. So anyway, I'll have to set a target up down there somewhere. Uh, there's a nice laneway they could use there. But the thing is, is to sight in for a uh, hundred yards, because most of my shots are going to be less than that between hunting in there and hunting over there. But I'll probably, like I say, unless I get lucky, I don't know what that was. Uh, unless I get lucky and get uh, our, get the, my credit card numbers, uh, you know, uh, limit up, um, and get myself a really dandy two two three. That's ideal. Is I think the two two three or twenty two two fifty would be obviously the coyote gun. I don't know. Like if you guys have shot a wolf, a wolf or a coyote with a twenty two two fifty, did it completely destroy the pelt, <laughs> or was it? Like I, I, it's not about making them dead. Anything, anything's good enough if you just want to make make them dead. But if you want an actual fur gun where you can sell the pelt after, I, I think two two three is probably the the best bet. So you can see, I bet you they come down off of there a bit, quite a bit too. But that is pretty steep. But it, well, I mean, for a wolf, it doesn't matter. But as you see, they'll be running all in on the swamp here, and stuff like that. But. The real goal is to get them to use the, the trail here and then set stuff set stuff up along because I don't never necessarily want to trap any closer than or any further than here for the wolves and the coyotes. Uh, the main reason being like maybe I'll trap down there. I could do the very far end. It's just I don't want to kick like nobody's dogs come back here. But uh, I you know like I'm uh, one of those guys that I take every precaution beyond the precaution that is required. So, what was that? Something moved there. A little puff of smoke. 
So that's nice. Oh, that's all, the sky's starting to turn a different color there at two o'clock in the afternoon. You got like an African style sunset in the middle, middle of late, you know, almost late uh, December. <laughs> It's almost Christmas, but anyway, getting back to it, yeah, ethical, ethical trapping. I'm a very ethical trapper. Uh, I know some people say, oh, can you be ethical with the trapping? Trust me, that's the whole point of this series is to show you guys how to trap animals in a manner where you do it right, where, you know, you do the least amount of uh, suffrage, you know what I mean? But you also, you don't want to, that's the only issue I have with my neighbor is uh, he wants to set up for snares for wolves and coyotes and I want him to set it further back but he wants to stay close to the house because he sees them coming out there but I'm like you know there could be roaming dogs you know I know people should keep their dogs on their land and all that stuff I, I agree with that but dogs are dogs right sometimes like my brother's dogs they get away all the time you know uh, they're, they're usually pretty good but when they get away they ramble right and it is what it is so I always try to make sure I don't do that uh, just even a, you know it's not a matter who, of who's in the right and wrong. It's also about keeping the peace too, eh? So that, that's another reason why I do that. So I'll sweet talk him. He, I, I'm sure he'll go for it, you know, because, uh, you know, he has dogs too. So I don't want him to catch his own dog. You know what I mean? Because uh, that can happen. You know what I mean? And that has happened to people where they're like, uh, they take their dogs on the trap line with them and they end up catching their dogs in the trap line. Uh, I mean, it doesn't happen to many people, but it can happen, right? And if we're talking snares, uh, you know, you're, you you might be able to save your pet out of a snare if you're right there. But even at that, if they snag themselves good, they're, they're pretty much, even if you get them out of the snare, they're going to die. Because the snares, when an animal, like a wolf or a coyote hits it, they hit it full running, right? They hit that full running, that's going to clothesline them. And it busts their uh, blood vessels on both sides of the neck. So they're going to die anyway, even if they get out of it. Uh, they're going to internally bleed to death. So uh, that's why you want to get it so that, you know, when they get in there, they ain't getting out. You know what I mean? That's why you get the drag pole and all that stuff. So anyway, I, I didn't want to get too far on the, uh, the, the it should be good. I know a lot of wild chickens hang out there. Mm, wild chickens. Now, wild chickens is a different story. Kill them all, but put them in a pot because they're really good. Just leave a few to breed so you can get more to kill them all so the following season. But did you see what that wild chicken did to me back there in the previous video? Mmm, wild chicken. But anyway, yeah, uh, so there's my rambling on that anyway.